Morning everyone, it's Audrey Stitchy Witch 42. It is Tuesday, April 28th. It's the last day of my 61st year. I'm going to be 62 tomorrow. The body feels like it's 62. The body feels like it's a lot older sometimes. The brain keeps going, <laughs> yeah. Someday I should act my age, but I don't think I'm going to, because <sighs> what fun is that, you know? So I've been doing some traveling this last week. I went to Poland and Slovenia, Bulgaria, Romania. I went over to the Vatican City. I went to Liechtenstein. I went to Andorra. Went down to Monte Carlo, up to Finland and Norway, spent a couple of days in France. Yeah, all sitting in my front yard. My front yard. Oh my God. My living room. Yeah. I, I start recording videos and wrong words come out or words disappear. Fiber film. Yes, I know what fiber fill is. And thank you all for yelling at the screen and letting me know that you yelled at the screen because <laughs> I knew you were. I knew you were. Anyway, I spent a couple of days watching just a ton of Rick Steves videos. And I'm telling you, it was a really, really nice mental vacation. I highly recommend it for everybody. All of his videos are on YouTube. Spend a half an hour, an hour, a day traveling somewhere else and get yourself away from our current reality because it was a good thing. It was a good thing. I always liked his videos because, you know, you get to see the people in other countries and you get to experience some of the foods in the other countries, but he also teaches history. And... There's important stuff that we just, we can't, cannot forget. So anyway, do some traveling. It's a good thing. I also got to be involved with a couple of Zoom meetups. Uh, last Thursday, I joined Becca Sambry Stitches Thursday meetup, and there were several people there. And I am telling you, that's the first time I've done a Zoom meetup, and... It was easier than I thought once someone told me how to get into the group. And it was just so nice to talk with other stitchers, you know, real time. Maybe not face to face, maybe not side to side having little conversations, but talking with other stitchers was just fantastic. One of the ladies that was in the Zoom meetup, her name is Alma. And she does videos. She's Alma's Little Wonders. And I checked her out this morning. I only got to watch part of one of her videos because I wanted to get up here and record today. Um, she lives down in Southern California, and she does her videos in both English and Spanish. So that's pretty cool. She does a lot of big projects. I know she's currently working on a Hogwarts piece. She's also working on a Hobbit piece. You know I like those. So, yeah, go check her out. Alma's Little Wonders. I'll do the link below. I have a bunch of stuff scattered around. I cleaned my desk off for y'all. I cleaned my desk off. I've been up here working on journals because this is where I do it. You can kind of sort of see right here. Oh, that looks good. That's my stack of papers that I use for working on my journals and I'm not going to show you the front of this one because I'm working on it for somebody but this is what the inside of a journal looks like when I get started like I said this is just a manila folder and it's just been cut and folded and I've already got the side pocket going here but I've got the front covered and I put uh, the Mod Podge on it so it looks a bit warped right now. 
but by the time I get everything else glued onto it and put into it and everything, it will it will be really, really nice. And I'm not going to show you the other side because I'm making it for someone else. And if they decide to share it, that's up to them. All right. I have a couple of FFOs. One I did yesterday and one I finished this morning. So I told all of you in my last videos that I was fed up with Quaker Gone Haunted. I stitched the tree and I loved the tree. I used Gentle Arts Fisherman's Wharf wool and I meandered because I wanted a modeled effect on that tree. And it turned out fantastic. And then I started stitching the rest of it and fell out of love with it. I listed it as one of the pieces that I was going to uh, finish in Melanie Watkins what whip group and every time I tried to talk myself into working on it it just I didn't want to I just didn't want to but I really really like the way that tree turned out so I framed a tree and I think that this is just really really cute it's real simple. It's easy. Yes, I cut into something that I'd been stitching, but it wasn't making me happy anymore. So I had found this frame. In fact, I found two of them. The other piece that I finished is also finished in, in one of these frames. Um, I found this frame at Goodwill last summer sometime and just stuck it away. And I just wrapped this around the cardboard that's inside because it's not an heirloom piece. Nobody else is going to appreciate the tree as much as I appreciate the tree. But I just think that that looks pretty darn cool. So that's my version of Michelle Inc.'s Quaker Gone Haunted. Works. It works. And then I told you that there was a piece from Night Spirit Studio that I wanted to stitch to take to my office at work. So I had dyed that um, Eda cloth that I had from the box last summer. This is either a 22, 20 or 22 count. I don't know which and I haven't counted it. I dyed it black and gray and I called Janine up at Acorns and I said, I want to stitch this piece, but I need, I don't have any reds in variegated floss. And you know me, I don't stitch with a lot of variegated floss. So I told her what I wanted, and I said, send me two or three different colors. And of course I left them all downstairs, but that's okay, I have the finished piece so I can show you what they look like on the finished piece. I told her I needed one that could look like flame. You'll get it, just a second. You'll get it, just a second. So she sent me three colors, and all three of them were fantastic. So I used all three of them in this piece. This is Hell is Other People, and it's from Night Spirit Studio. And if you look at that, the word Hell is stitched in Weeks Fiesta. The Is Other People is a Threadworks and then the flowers is a different Threadworks. But these all look fantastic together. I finished it into the same frame and I will be taking this to work when I go back to work on Saturday because I'm taking tomorrow off. I don't work on my birthday for anybody. I don't. So those are my two FFOs. Um, last video I talked about putting this one up for adoption, which is Gate, and I had commented on Deborah Watkins. She was the very first lady to say that she wanted to adopt it. I commented on her comment. I have not heard back from her 
So Deborah, if you should happen to watch this video, please contact me by this coming Friday, which will be May 1st. Um, if I haven't heard from you by then, I'm going to go on to the second lady who said that they would like to finish it. All right, projects. On Thursday, while I was in Becca's Zoom meetup, I stitched on Blackbird Designs Blackbird. And I managed to get the vase finished. So now I am working down here and I'm going to get the leaves done down here. Like I said, there's leaves to do over here and the bird to do up in the middle and then this one will be finished. So, it was really nice to have something simple to work on at the meetup. And I tried to do, I did that meetup sitting at my kitchen table. My kitchen light isn't bright enough to stitch in. I had to bring my little, um, table light. I can't think of what it is. Daylight lamp down there. Um... It was just really, really awkward to try to sit there and stitch with that at the kitchen table. So Sunday night when I did my second Zoom meetup, and this time it was with Lisa Smith contacted me again, and she contacted Linda Jo, Pretty Southern, and Michelle Garrett, Bendy Stitchy. We were the first four ladies that met up and started the first Thursday meetups at Acorns and Threads. So Sunday night, three of us did a Zoom meetup, and we sat and stitched, and that time I came up here and stitched because I had more desk space. I could get my computer on the desk here, and it worked a lot better for me to, to do my Zoom, to join the Zoom meetup up here. So what I worked on Sunday night is a piece that I'm stitching for an exchange. This is a Sue Hillis pattern. Um, it's a booklet called Dark Shadows, printed in 2016, and I am stitching this one right here for the exchange. It's Hocus Pocus. Now, before I show you what I've been working on in that, I want to talk about this pattern. Um, a lot of us have been doing a lot of buying online, and I know that Acorns and Threads has been kept busy with a lot of purchases made online and by phone, and that is fantastic. There's another shop here in Oregon, Starlight Stitchery, down in Corvallis. And if you watch Becca's videos, Sambri Stitches, she talks about them. They just purchased that business a year, a year and a half ago. And when they purchased that business, they also bought a lot of old stock. They're having problems. They haven't been able to pay the rent for the last couple of months. Um, and they're trying to raise money to get out of the lease on the building early because... They're just not doing the business that they could be. They do have an online shop. They are also on Facebook, Starlight Stitchery. If you're looking for older patterns, contact them. Chances are really good they may have something that you're looking for. Uh, they also have a GoFundMe um, right now. I don't know all the information about that. Check out Becca's videos because she can tell you more about that. But if you can help out a brick and mortar shop, please help them out. Starlight Stitchery. Anyway, I purchased this uh, when I was down there last summer. Like I said, I am working on this one for an exchange. And so this is what I got done. I was working on the Pocus. I was working on the pocus, ma'am. And when I was stitching Sunday night, I realized that the P, the O, and the C, I had all made them one 
stitch too long. When I started doing this line here across the bottom, it's supposed to be one space between the letters. That's where I found out my mistake. So I spent half of that Zoom meetup taking out the bottom of those three letters and redoing them so that I could get it fixed and straightened out. And then I started working on this swirl. I have the other half of this swirl to do down here. There's a moon behind the letters. And then there's a black cat that goes up above the top. And I'm going to do the black cat one over one. This is a 28 count Lugana. So I should be able to do that. I just don't like one over one stitching. Alrighty. Okay. So I talked about that, I talked about that, I talked about that, I talked about that, and that, and that. A lady that I really enjoy watching her videos is Nisi Lynn. Oh my god, she is a riot. She is just hilarious, and the stories she tells. I, I could just spend hours listening to her talk because I think she's hilarious, and she's funny, and she's just a wonderful, wonderful lady. On her last video, she wished me happy birthday because I had made a comment. Both her birthday and mine is this month, and I'd made a comment about that. So thank you very much, Nisi Lynn, and happy birthday to you. I know I'm late. But I do appreciate it. Melanie Smith is also an April baby, and I've wished her a happy birthday through Messenger and Facebook and all the things. And to everybody whose birthday is in April, happy birthday. Over the past couple of weeks, I have been receiving some mail, and I, it's been stacking up. So I thought that I would share some stuff with you. And I'm going to start with... A package that I received yesterday from Vicki, Stitch and Buttons. That was on the back of the envelope. So cute. Now, if you've watched my videos for any length of time, you're going to understand what I'm about to show you. If this is your first time watching, um, I'm going to make you go back and see if you can find out why this is important. But I opened up the envelope and I got a tissue. <laughs> Thank you, Vicki. Thank you. She sent me a bunch of little goodies that she said she'd had around, hanging around for a while. And they're just scrapbooking papers because she knows I've been doing the journaling. She sent me a bunch of stickers. Just stickers. She sent me Baby Yoda. little bottles. Some of them are travel. And there was this one sticker in here that when I saw it, I just... First of all, there's no way that she could have known this, but I think that this is really, really pretty cool. This little sticker says, Wine Estreich. And you're going, okay, yeah. So it says Wein Estreich. What's that mean? Estreich is my mother's maiden name. Do, 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 Yeah. I don't know. Coincidence? I don't know. It came with a tissue. What do you think? Hairs. And then she sent some more stickers. And I'll use them all. Because they're fun. Okay. 
coffee cup. A couple weeks ago, I received a little package from uh, Colette Kingsley, Highway Stitcher. She is a very, very nice lady. And again, she's somebody that you should be checking out and watching her videos. Vicky too, Stitch and Buttons. Anyway, Colette sent me this little book. And what it is, is it's, it's got the little um, library card inside of it and the floss away bags so that you can use it for a project. And I just think that this is adorable. And of course it has witches on it. Because, you know, witches. Lovely card in there. Thank you very much, Colette. I do appreciate it. I received a card from uh, Michelle, Maine Moose Mom. There is a, a word on the, the card that some people might be offended by. Oh well. The face of that Cocker Spaniel looks like the Cocker Spaniel we used to have. We had an English Cocker, so she didn't have the long fluffy coats like this. We never let her get that long. She was an English Cocker and she was very much a hunting dog. Her name was Lady Freckles McBark. My husband actually has a portrait of her in his office. When he was making knives, um, a woman who painted animal portraits wanted one for her husband, and they made a deal. So we have a portrait of our Cocker Spaniel who has this face in Mark's office. We're not currently owned by any animals, and that's good. It is. There are times that I miss them, but then I just go over and I play with the grand puppies. Um, one of the ladies in on my What Whip team, Team 9, or 9 and 3 quarters as I like to call them, you may know her. She is Amy Gables Stitches on YouTube. She sent me this card, and she had dyed some floss, and in her note she said that she was trying to dye a purple floss, but she thinks she made black. That's okay. You can always use black. Always use black. I got a beautiful, beautiful Easter card from my sister, which Stacy. And then I got this gorgeous card from Daylene. This is a picture that she took last year in her garden and she just put it on the front of a nice piece of paper and wrote a note inside of it and just absolutely beautiful. So thank you to everybody who has sent me cards and gifts and stickers and I love them all. I've saved one piece that was sent to me because, oh my God, this is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. In this community, I have been blessed and I have met so many fantastic people. And the first Thursday meetups, while they're not currently happening, they had a huge impact on my life, huge impact on my life. And I have met so many fantastic ladies. I just can't tell you. But when Lisa and Linda and Michelle and I did that very, very first meetup, Linda Jo recorded it and put up the first video of a first Thursday meetup. The following month, there was a lady who came there because she said that when she watched that video, she found her tribe. And she and Lisa, in particular, have become really, really good friends because they were both living in Olympia, Washington. And they were both stitchers, and they were both quilters. 
And of course, I am talking about Lori, textilist. Lori does long arm quilting and she has made some absolutely beautiful things. And if you've watched any of her videos on her recent ones, she showed off some bags that she's been stitching. And they're called Mondo bags. And she sent one to me. She knows my love for everything Halloween. So when I opened up my package and I saw this, I mean, first of all, look at those owls. Are they not just stunningly beautiful? And then it opens up and this is all quilted all quilted it's got the handles it's got this and it opens up into this huge huge bag that is all quilted it's reversible inside there are pockets Lori I didn't know there was pockets until Lisa told me the other day <laughs> yeah there's pockets in here there's four little side pockets in there even the bottom is quilted <sighs> this is just thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you this is gorgeous and it will definitely be getting used a lot because they do fold up nice and neat so they don't take much space up when it's all folded. But when I can get back to first Thursdays again, I can take this with me to Acorns and Threads full of all the projects that I want to work on. And yeah. Okay, so I have been doing some purchasing. I've been doing some purchasing for cross stitch. I've also been doing some purchasing for the crafting room. Mark has been working on it. Last week he went back to work. He works for a paving company. And so last week he worked all week long. Yesterday he was supposed to work and then they canceled it. So he came home, he's putting the baseboard molding in there, and I showed a picture on Instagram. This side of the wall is, is my bookcase wall. The back of the bookcase wall has hardboard on it, which is just a very, very thin uh, pressed board, and you can't nail through it. So he had to come up with a way to attach the molding to that, and he went and bought uh, glue of some sort. So he rigged bars across the floor to press it against the wall while it dried. So the baseboard molding is up. He's starting to cut the pegboard which is going to go on the back of the bookcase wall so that I can hang things there. So last night I ordered two drawer units to go in there that I will put my uh, extra DMC flosses and whatever else I can fit into it in there. I also ordered the bed frame because it's getting there. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's getting there. For cross stitch, I've ordered two pieces. I don't know if I showed this one before. This was one that I called um, Janine up at Acorns, and I said, I need this one. This is Blackwater Blooms, and it was stitched. It's shown on Havana, which is one of my favorite, but she didn't have any Havana. So what she sent to me is a piece of Tuscan Sun. And I just think this will be absolutely gorgeous. Um, I had her send me a piece of 32, so this this 
piece will end up being approximately nine by six inches big. But this is Blackwater Blooms by Needle Maid Designs. The other day on someone's video, and I can't remember who, I remember the first time I saw this, I tried to find the pattern and I couldn't find it. And then someone showed it again. So I went to Not Forgotten Farms and I ordered Sisters of the Broom. This is something that is so different from what I usually stitch. But I just think that that is so pretty. So there's a couple of projects for in the future. When I get things moved into the other room there, I will do a stash dive because right now there's too much of a mess on the other side of the library for me to show you anything. <laughs> but I still have one more thing that I want to show you. So I'm going to pause the camera, turn it around, and focus on Alphonse Mucha. Hold on. Okay, talk about wonky angles. I've got my tripod, tripod, words, um, two legs are on the desk, one leg is on the floor, I twisted it around, I've adjusted the angle of the camera, I've adjusted the angle of my stand, so hopefully this is straight to you and everything in the background is crooked. Don't look at the background, it's a mess. Anyway, I've been working on my Alphonse Mucha. I've decided that my rotation is going to be when I'm sitting in the living room stitching, this is what I'm working on because this stays downstairs most of the time. When I go to work, I'll take something with me. If I'm sitting out in the backyard, I'll take a small project out there and that's how I'm going to work on them. But that way it gives me a chance to focus on my Alphonse Mucha. So right about here is the first page. Um, right here, you can see the straight line of the edge of the second page. I have been working on filling in all of this when I was doing all my traveling. This is what I've been working on. And seeing the detail show up on this one, y'all know the, how much I love Alphonse Mucha. Y'all know that I needed to see the details, and I see it on this piece, and I am so happy to be working on it. I started this one on March 22nd, and so I've been working on it for a little bit over a month, and I am really, really pleased with how this is coming along. She is an absolutely gorgeous piece. So, to see inside the crafting burrow, hold on. Okay, this is what Mark is doing to put the um, molding against the back of the bookcase wall. Okay, hold my camera. This is the molding, and then he's using these pieces and his levels to push against the molding to help it seal. So we're going to take a slow swivel around. He got this side done yesterday. The wood on the floor is just a simple laminate. It was a really exp inexpensive laminate that we got at Home Depot. 89 cents a square foot. And it's, I don't remember what the color is, but I think it's gorgeous. So he gets this finished here. Then he needs to put the pegboard on the back of this wall here and the back of this wall here, and I can start moving some things in. And there, you can see my desk and the tripod that I had set up and all the stuff that's out there, but I'm not gonna show you the other side of the room. So, at this time, I'm going to say, live long and stitch on, my friends. Until next time, stay safe, stay home, bye-bye.